Did you ever hear the tragedy of Darth Collingwood the Wise? Well, if not, I'll tell you. Darth Collingwood supplanted his master on World of Warships PC. HMS Nelson was considered to be too powerful. It was unceremoniously removed from the store by assassination on the part of HMS Collingwood. And then HMS Collingwood came into the game to take Nelson's place, and everybody saw immediately that it was 100% inferior. I am, of course, talking about the situation on World of Warships PC. HMS Nelson was removed from sale on that game and replaced with this thing because, as I said, it was considered too powerful. And, well, it's here along with Nelson in World of Warships Legends, and like its relation to that ship on World of Warships PC, Collingwood is 100% inferior in pretty much every meaningful way. And I'll get into telling you why, but the first thing is the guns. That's the first thing I want to highlight. There are only six of them, and they are 419 millimeters, which is the same size as Conqueror, but that doesn't matter as much as you might think it does, and we'll get into that for a second. I just want to take a moment to point out this salvo to you, the initial salvo against the North Carolina. You can see 17 kilometers away, flat broadside. We take the shot. The shells are all hugging each other. The dispersion is great. It looks like Georgia accuracy, honestly. And it sort of hits like Georgia, too. 33,000 damage done with two citadels. Certainly not bad, right? You might be thinking to yourself, well, these guns look like they're pretty good. But are they this accurate all the time? Well, no. No, not at all. In fact, they get much, much worse, and it's pretty inconsistent. Honestly, take a look at this salvo. This is on the other extreme end. Look at that shell grouping and that dispersion. Absolute travesty. And we only get one shell to hit for 4,000 damage against a much superior ship. So HMS Collingwood is just not good. I would highly recommend not buying it. But let's run through the stats. To start off with, it has 58,500 hit points, which is about 1,000 hit points less than Nelson. So all in all, not a big difference. Torpedo damage reduction is 25%, which, you know, not very helpful at all. You don't want to be taking too many torpedoes. You do have sonar, though, to give you advanced warning of the torpedoes, which is nice. Although it's sort of a gimmick that wouldn't need to be there if the rest of the ship was, you know, better. Circling back to the 419mm guns, though, there are six of them. They are the same size as the guns found on Conqueror, but... 419 millimeters, you might be thinking that gives you some sort of significant advantage over the Nelson's 406. It absolutely does not. The only advantages it might give you are that because the shells are a little bit bigger, they have a little bit better penetration, and they have a little bit of extra maximum AP and HE shell damage. That's it. They don't offer you any more overmatch capability than 406 millimeter guns. Overmatch, by the way, because I think a lot of people conflate overmatch with just regular penetration. No. A penetration is when your AP shell hits a surface of armor and does not ricochet or shatter, but instead penetrates. And it must do this at a certain flat angle. Overmatch simply means that when you shoot your AP shell at a surface of armor, if the shell is big enough and the armor is thin enough, it will ignore the armor completely and simply go right through. No ricochet check will be performed, no shatter check will be performed, the shell will penetrate every time regardless of angle. Now, 406mm guns can overmatch 27mm of armor. The way you calculate overmatch potential is you take the gun in millimeters, you take the gun size, so 406 divided by 14.3. That's the magic number. You can take any gun caliber in millimeters in this game and divide that number by 14.3. That will give you the armor value that those guns overmatch. You'll have to round down to the nearest whole number. 406 divided by 14.3 equals 27 point something something something. So 406 millimeter guns can overmatch 27 millimeters of armor. 419 guns can overmatch 29. You can take a look at all of the armor 
of every ship in this game, and I guarantee you, you will not find 20, 29 millimeter plating of any kind of significance on any ship, except maybe some ships have 29 millimeter casemate placing or something like that around their secondary guns. But 29 millimeters is a weird value, it doesn't show up. If something has armor plating on the bow or the sides, it's either got 27 or it's got 30. Nothing in between, and 406 millimeter guns can already overmatch 27 millimeters of armor, so 419 isn't giving you anything in the overmatch department. The guns are just deceiving. I think they're 419 millimeter guns to sort of trick people into think they're getting some sort of advantage over 406. You're really not. These guns have an 18.2 kilometer range. They do reload in 26 seconds, which is pretty snappy. The maximum HE shell damage is 6,150, which is a little bit less than Nelson's, although the fire chance is 47%, which is quite excellent, honestly. And then the maximum AP shell damage with gyrating drill bits is 14,300. And by the way, I did have to change to the gyrating drill bit skill on my AL Nelson commander in order to get these guns to not perform like, well, absolute dog water. I wouldn't recommend running Big 7 on this ship. Big 7 cuts down the penetration on both the AP and HE by 15% while simultaneously buffing their maximum damage by the same number, and the trade-off is definitely not worth it on HMS Collingwood. You don't want to cut down on the penetration of these guns because, as you've seen so far, when they do hit, they can do a devastating amount of damage, but that's when they do hit, which is not all that often. The AA defense is basically non-existent, much like Nelson. It has an AA defense rating of 47% and is completely incapable of defending itself against planes of any kind. So there is that too. Then the maneuverability is, I suppose, the one area where it's really improved over the Nelson. It's got a top speed of 27 knots, which is faster than Nelson's top speed of 24 or 25. Although I am running dry rating drill bits on this commander, so the speed is 24.3 knots, which is not great. It's got an 800 meter turning circle, which is, I guess, fairly small for a battleship, not too bad. And the rudder shift also isn't too bad at 15 and a half seconds. The concealment, of course, is excellent with concealment mod and condo as an inspiration, 11.7 kilometers, and it needs every single one of those because we're about to get into the real low lights, the real thing that makes this ship so inferior to the Nelson, and that is the armor scheme. Now, Nelson, as we probably already know, has a 26 millimeter bow and stern, meaning both the bow and stern can be overmatched by 380 millimeter guns and larger. But the key on Nelson is that the side armor and the deck armor are both 32 millimeters, which cannot be overmatched by anything except the likes of Yamato and Musashi which of course Nelson does not face those ships, so effectively it can angle its side armor and ricochet the shells of every battleship it faces. Collingwood cannot do the same thing. Collingwood also has 26mm bow and stern plating, but that plating is everywhere on the hull, on every part of it. It's just coated in 26mm. If you look at the armor viewer, the entire hull is green. So the entire hull is overmatchable by 15 inch guns and larger. Again, that's 380 millimeters. So effectively, you cannot protect yourself from battleship AP in this thing. You can angle, and you do have citadel belt armor that will bounce shells and prevent you from being citadeled, but anywhere else those shells hit, they will simply penetrate and they will do massive chunks of armor piercing damage. And then you do have an improved heal but it isn't the super British zombie heal that Nelson has. You are not going to be reprinting your ship with this thing. At most, the heal seems to be able to restore about three bars of HP. Uh, for numbers, it does 600 HP per second compared to Nelson's 1200 HP per second. So it's about half as effective. And for a little bit of perspective, the typical battleship heal, I think, does anywhere between 300 and 400 HP per second on average. So this thing is improved over a typical battleship heal, but it is definitely not the zombie heal, and it definitely does not make up for the utter incapability of this ship to defend itself against any kind of high-caliber armor piercing. 
The only ways it's got to defend itself are to heal the damage after the fact, or to spec into concealment and then play pretty passively and pretty far away. That's what we've been doing here, and you can see the heal in action. It is restoring quite a bit of HP, and that's helpful, but every time that Amagi hits us, every single time, he's going to penetrate without exception, and he's going to be chunking us to death before this game is over. And, well, yeah. So, I don't think this is a very good ship. I would absolutely recommend not buying it. In fact, I think we'll go to the store. I've got the game actually open as I am recording this commentary to reference things. Yes, let's see. So HMS Collingwood is on sale for 12,500 doubloons. You can also buy it in the Collingwood XXL pack at 19,300 doubloons, which in my opinion would be an absolutely ridiculous buy. Instead, if you scroll over to the ships tab on the game, you'll find that some of the ships are on sale. And in fact, is HMS Nelson on sale? It is. Nelson is marked down to 8,750 doubloons. That's a 30% markdown and a great price. If you want a British battleship that is actually effective and very good, then look no further than Nelson especially at that price. If you're willing to spend 12,500 doubloons on a premium tier 6 battleship, then certainly you're willing to spend 8,750 on Nelson. And if you do, I guarantee you, you will be much happier than if you buy this thing. It simply cannot defend itself. And that's what makes it not great. It doesn't even have the benefits that something like Strasbourg has. Because you might look at it and compare it to that ship. Strasbourg also is coated in 26 millimeters of armor, so it's overmatchable everywhere. And yeah, that's true, but Strasbourg is faster. It's got 8 guns versus 6. It's got a 21 second reload on those guns versus 26 here. And all of those factors honestly make it much more redeeming than this thing. Uh, the Strasbourg is quite good, whereas Collingwood just is not, despite the fact that we did get the high caliber there and we managed to burn down the Scharnhorst. We're going to get another good salvo before this game is over on the Amagi, by the way, and we are dangerously close to actually throwing it. If you can't tell, we're at 951 points. We've got almost no HP left and no way to defend ourselves against the Amagi. Only our CV is left. He's harassing the Nelson over there on the other side. Well, actually, we do have one battleship left, but he's about to go down any second now as we reach 975 points, and that's going to, of course, knock us down and prevent us from winning the game immediately. So this could be a throw, but spoiler alert, it's not going to be. You can see there, by the way, we're angled against the Amagi. The Nelson, at this same angle, would have no problem bouncing the Amagi shells off of its broadside. Collingwood obviously can't, so one more salvo from the Amagi, and we are toast. We do manage to get a Citadel on him, which I guess is nice, but we're going to go down before this game ends. So, and this, by the way, was the best result I managed to get in HMS Collingwood. I played it for like 13 or 14 games. I've got a 62% win rate in it as of this moment, which is not bad, but... I was not able to break 100,000 damage before this game, and you can listen to that and say, well, that's just because you're playing the battleship wrong. I don't think so. I think that's just because the battleship is poor. So Collingwood is a very disappointing premium. I cannot recommend it at all, but I can highly recommend HMS Nelson, and if you've been following my channel for a while, then you know I've got a ton of content covering HMS Nelson and why it's so great. It's also my most played ship in the game at over 500-something games, I think. Most of them played completely solo, and I have a 64% win rate in it, which I think is pretty great for solo play in a battleship. So that should give you some sort of indication of how great that ship is. If you're going to get a Tier six British battleship, it's got to be HMS Nelson. It really shouldn't be this thing. This thing is a tragedy. Hope you enjoyed the video. If so, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.